The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's Platinum Webinar with your host, Todd Walters. Thank you, Andrea. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Hope everybody's uh, business is on fire in a good way. Um, I've had a lot of conversations here recently with uh, Platinum members, and, um, and the overall prognosis for the year is way up. So I don't know if you know this, uh, but I've got, I think I've got a screenshot. Let me see what, I, let me see what you're looking at here. I've got a screenshot of the uh, coaching side up. So what should be happening is when you log into uh, CraigParkerCoaching.com, uh, around the first of the month, I think it's around the fifth of the month is the way Adrian's got it set up for us, because you're going to get a survey. And the survey asks you these questions. Okay, you ready? Uh, is your business up or down over the same time last year, and why? Okay, and that's really important. So you're going to answer that uh, question, and uh, if you can't answer the question, we want to uh, be able to drill down and figure out why you can't answer that question. It means you have a number problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I want to say it again. Is your business up or down over the same time last year and why? Okay. The answer to that question is very, very revealing. Number one, do you even know your numbers? Are you able to track your sales at everything? Um, so as a matter of fact, let me do this. Let me go to uh, the, here we go. I'm just going to show it to you guys. I'll, I'll let you follow along on my screen while I'm doing this. Um, this are, these are the materials for the upcoming uh, Platinum Millionaire Agent Maker Conference. Okay, each one of these folders has a lot of stuff in it. Okay, message to market match, you must be marketing, you can see all that. Okay, um, I've got a, in the folder here, let me see, I think it's in the Millionaire Agent Business Franchise. Let me open that up. And uh, here it is right here, CP Millionaire Agent Scoreboard. Okay, so I'm going to open that Word document up. So let it pop up here. That's not it. That's my cash form lease. Let's see if I can get it to come up here. Hang on. Let me, let me get rid of some of these Word documents. You can see what I was working on. Oh, man. The uh, computer froze up there. So no problem. Hang on, I can improvise them quick, and uh, I think I can get that to come up. It's not popping up there, but let me go back. Let me try it again. There we go. Okay, I just got too much stuff open there. All right, let me open it up. Here we go. Okay, so on your numbers, on your numbers, and uh, I'm just going to jump right in here and, and do this. We've got a lot of things to cover here with you today, uh, but you know, I don't know how good you are at keeping your numbers. But this is the scoreboard. This is the, the accounting report okay, for yourself, for your business. I want you to imagine it like this. You're able to sit down with one of your agents, and you hand them a report uh, each month, and it's the scoreboard. Okay? Everybody plays differently when you keep score. right? So you hand your agent this report, and on the report it says, how many leads they got, how many appointments they set, okay, or how many appointments were set for them, um, how many of those appointments actually made, okay, how many listing agreements they got, how many buyer agreements they got, how many listings sold, buyers sold, and how long it took. That's important. How long it took. How long did it take? from the listing to get signed to the buyer agreement to get signed, okay? Uh, a listing signed to the closing, buyer agreement signed to closing. That's really important, okay? So not just tracking the numbers, but length of time in the sales process as well. So this scoreboard form I've got for you here, I'm gonna blow it up, and uh, let me see if I can do that here, just bear with me, I've got some, uh, weird things going on with the uh, system here. So I'll figure it out. Let me blow it up so you guys can see it really big. It's weird, man. Nothing seems to be working here. So anyway, I don't know what's up. Um, I don't know if it's the update uh, tab or not, but 
Let me give it one more go because I want you guys to be able to see this without straining. There we go. Right, I'm having some glitches on the system here. I don't know if it's because I got too many things open or not. All right, so check it out. Reporting each month. Ready? Number of leads by buyer. Okay, so do you track it this way? By buyer, that means investor, first time buyer, move a buyer, move down buyer. By seller, and of course by buyer and seller. Here's why you want to track your business this way. It establishes trends. Establishes trends. So you'll know uh, hey, what's working, what's not working, what segment of the marketplace maybe you need to spend a little bit more money and time on, and which maybe you don't need to spend more money and time on. Okay? Leads by source. Okay, so at the conference, Craig and I are going to show you a pick list of all of the categories, basically what you're spending money on. Okay, for example, everything you're spending money on. So imagine that list right now, everything you're spending money on, okay, and that's your pick list. So when leads come in, they came from one of those sources. Okay, so let's suppose it's a referral, and you can see how it got there. Let me highlight that for you. Ooh, hey, the Dow just closed down 470 points today. That's not good. Just got that notice. <clears throat> we'll talk about that in a minute. It kind of ties into what's going on here, but there's some weird stuff going on in the financial markets here that you all need to be prepared for. So if I have time, I'll get into uh, that in a moment. But being able to stay ahead of the trends of what's going on in your marketplace is a big deal. Many of you know my story. Uh, when we got ahead of the market crash in Metro Atlanta with our bid. Okay, many of you guys know that story. I would not have been able to do that if what you're looking at right now on your computer screen we weren't doing. Okay, so tracking and knowing your numbers, reporting, being able to show your agent, for example, their scoreboard uh, means everybody plays differently. Okay, so referral source code. So I get that many of you right now have a tag in your contact management system says referral. But you really need to have a subcategory as well on some of these tracking codes. So for example, a subcode like referral John Smith. So John Smith is an actual contact. I can click on John's name, it brings up his contact card uh, in the system. So referral one thing, referral from John Smith, totally something different. So as I'm looking at my sales report, it's not just all referrals, you know, that, that are referral deals, but it's referral John Smith, referral John Smith, ref, referral John Smith, referral Susie Q, referral, you know, um, Bill, so-and-so. That's important because when someone's sending you a lot of referral business, you, you might want to put in a little more energy and effort into that one source. It's not unlike other um, places that you're getting your leads from. Okay, so for example, if if a lot of your business is coming from for sign calls, then you would want to spend a little bit more effort getting more listings. Okay, like that's a big deal. Like you're making a lot of money just off sign calls. So how can we get more signs out there? Well, let's invest more money into systems to get more listings. So all of this is revealing to the entrepreneur, to the rainmaker, on exactly what you need to do here to grow your business. So when, uh, when the fifth comes along and you log into your into the coaching site, and that notice pops up that says, hey, is your business up or down over the same time last year and why? You can answer these questions, all right? All right, so let's, let's look at this a little bit more. And again, we have a whole hour and a half dedicated to this with examples and everything at the conference. Okay, but it's worth talking about now since you're getting ready to have to answer that question again for another month on the coaching site. Is your business up or down over the same time last year and why? Why measure it against the same time last year? Everybody plays differently when you keep scoring. Your, goal, your job is to grow your business year in and year out, month in and month out. And you compare it to where you were last year. Okay, everybody's good when their business is up. We're happy. Okay, so uh, all right, tracking transactions. 
it's the same thing, but check this out. A percent of your transaction is broken down. For example, I got 61% of my transactions come from buyers, 39% come from sellers, hypothetically, or for example. Number of listings sold in team, okay, that were not a co-op sell. Okay, why is that important? Well, I'm thinking that you make more money on your properties that you sell in-house. So let's suppose that is a revealing trend that, wow, I'm selling a lot of listings myself. Okay, well, do you even need the MLS for this particular property that you just listed? All right? So that's why these are important. If you're serious about making money, profit in your business, then this, what you're looking at right now, will become a serious part of your monthly activities as a rainmaker. Okay, let's look at them a little bit more. Uh, let's look at gross income. So we have gross income, gross income, okay, um, which is GCI, gross commission income, by buyer, by seller. You have gross sales volume. Okay, there were times in the marketplace where supply and demand pushed pricing down. You guys have experienced some of that before. But even though pricing went down, prices went down, our income still went up. So if I'm seeing trends of downward pricing, you know, in the marketplace or even upward pricing mobility, I may have more flexibility, especially moving upward, on doing things with fees to take over a certain segment of the marketplace, for example. Okay, so you can pull a Bezos, you can put your competitors out of business by offering superior service and results for less money maybe to go in and take, over, take something over for a specific period of time in order to gain market share and, uh, and, and take the place over and then get back to your to your feed. That's just all growth strategy that might at some point be important to you, but gross sales volume, okay? But here's why you want the gross sales volume is so that you can measure the percent that you're making per transaction, okay? It's unlikely that you will be able to grow your real estate sales team on commission rates of 2% and 2.5%. It's unlikely. So I was talking to some platinum members earlier today, and uh, you know they told me it's it's five around here, five around here, and you know two and a half, two and a half kind of deal. So I'm like, well, then that means it's not five and two and a half, two and a half. Like that's just where it starts. You know, if you look at all your transactions, if that's where the starting fee is, you're giving up money on a good percentage of these transactions. So the average commission is not two and a half percent. Okay, what the hell does that keep popping up there for? I'm here, by the way. Hey, Mr. Proctor. How you doing, Mr. Walters? Oh, pretty good, buddy. We're just looking at uh, tracking and reporting and numbers and stuff. How's your day going? Uh, day is going well. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you loud and clear, bud. Excellent. Loud and clear. So um, I know that one of the sessions that uh, you know we've got in uh, Anaheim when you and I get together uh, with these guys in a few weeks, a couple weeks here, um, we're going to be talking about you know this whole franchise prototype you know and uh, in order to really grow this thing you got to know your numbers it's something we talk about pretty regularly so I was just running down through some of the things for example we realized early on Craig I don't know if I shared this with you but when the marketplace was changing and commissions begin to drop um, we were on the front end of that because we knew the numbers we were measuring you know, our our transaction or, or gross commission income against transactions and we were coming up with a percentage that we were making per sale and do it every month what was our commission percentage per transaction so over a period of time I began to see that slide a little bit and uh, step in and notice that it was um, you know it was a it was a slide overall in the marketplace and required action on our part so the point that I was just making is is that it's going to be very difficult for any of our members to grow a real estate sales team, you know, on a two percent or two and a half percent commission rate at average sales prices that exist in North America, uh, it's just difficult. It's hard to get buyers agents to come and work for you. So at some point, you have to combat the sliding scale of fees, where agents' income is sliding into a commodity, and uh, and set your fee and find it. Um, so. You know that I was in Toronto with you a couple weeks ago at the uh, Super Conference there, and we had our Platinum OSA workshop. And Shy and I 
you know, went around the streets there. I had the microphone and Shai had the camera, and we were filming a video uh, that we're going to show at the conference in a couple of weeks. And I'm calling it video, you know, real estate man on the street. So I started out by thinking that I was going to prove a point to all the platinum members, Craig, that what they think the public knows and believes about them um, based on the words that they use, probably wrong. So my first big idea was, you know, to piggyback on what I've learned here in Metro Atlanta, that when I use the word MLS or I talk to the public about what the MLS, you know, MLS, ML, they don't know what it is. You know, so here in Metro Atlanta, they don't really know what the MLS is. Uh, still to this day, it's not something that is ingrained in everybody's mind. Well, when I was on the streets in Toronto, virtually every person I asked, you know, that question, do you know what MLS is? What does MLS mean? Buddy, they all knew what it meant. They even were able to say, yeah, that's the multiple listing service uh, where you go online and you look for homes. And I'm like, well, do you need a real estate agent? No. You don't need a real estate agent. You just go online and find a house. So, uh, so, which is important to know. So it was even worse than I thought. Like the public in that Ontario area b believes in terms of looking at homes that real estate agents just aren't important. I can go find a house. So when you become that kind of commodity, uh, you got a problem. So this is a safe haven here, though. You know, we show real estate agents how to set and co um, and negotiate and collect fees, uh, so that and they play by a different set of rules. And uh, so that's in line with what I was just talking about here on this uh, on this on this deal. So well, anyway. we should we shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, that the public has that attitude. You know, not long ago, what people believed is if they wanted to uh, uh, book a, an air flight, uh, that they had to use a travel agent. That's what people used to believe, right? What people used to believe is if they wanted to buy stocks, that they had to call a stockbroker, okay? And for a long time, people believed, well, you know, if I want to find a house, I have to call a real estate agent. So if that's out the window, if, if buyers believe they can find their own home, and they do believe that, then what value do we bring to the table? You know, and we, we need to focus on that part of it. So what do buyers really want? I mean, they, they want uh, it done right for them, okay? They, they want us to make it easy for them. Uh, we're going to have to learn how to defend our fee, and the reason that fees go down, uh, and this is the first step in the cycle, uh, when when you know the the marketplace is being commoditized, the first step is everyone cuts prices because that's the the lazy man's way to marketing. We know that most of our competitors are not very good marketers. Okay, we know that. So since they're not good marketers, uh, they take the lazy, the, the lazy route, which is uh, they start to cut, and then everybody matches, and then uh, there's more cutting, and everybody matches, and it's a you know race to the bottom right now. This is the Walmart of real estate. That's what's going on. Everybody undercutting everyone else. Now, you've also heard me talk a lot about paradigms, and paradigms are other people's habits. So many real estate agents look around at the fee, the fees that their competitors are offering, and just figure, well, I gotta, I gotta follow suit. You know that that if that's what they're charging, I I need to charge the same or even lower. And when we talk to to real estate agents about um, charging a higher fee. You know the reaction is a, is somewhat surprising because Todd, we've even had agents get upset at even the idea that it may be possible to charge a higher fee than what the the going rate rate might be in in their marketplace. And uh, all we want is we want to help you guys get a pay raise, or at least defend what you've got now. But if um, if you don't understand this and embrace this. It will be a race to the bottom. Yeah, it's just a matter of time before you go out of business. So um, I'm getting less resistance on that now because the it's it's dire uh, for many. 
you know, that the fees have come down so low uh, in many of these marketplaces that successful agents get it, you know, and, and I think that's another reason some of our super conferences are beginning to fill up. Like, you know, people are, agents are starting to say, okay, there's some big changes afoot here and uh, we better get this thing figured out. We better go to the top of the pyramid here and see how it's done. So um, it, it is a big deal. I don't know how you can how you can run a business without knowing what you get paid. You know, so uh, if the fees in MLS, you know, it's not even that, Craig. I mean, imagine telling a buyer, "Hey, buyer, uh, I want you to work with me, and here's how it works. I'm only going to show you homes that are quote." in the MLS listed with an agent and then only the ones that I get paid a good wage on. I mean, if, if, if agents were honest with buyers, they wouldn't have any. Okay, so imagine how exhilarating it is and how much freedom you're, you're given as an agent when you're immune to, it doesn't matter what is in the MLS for a fee. Now you can show and sell any home for sale by owner, off-market property, something in MLS at a $500 commission or something in MLS at a 3.5% commission, doesn't matter. And uh, because you know how to successfully set, negotiate, and collect your fee when working with buyers. So um, that's what buyers want. So if you want more buyers, you know, if, you're, if your agents want more buyers, if you want more buyer transactions, that is how you do it. If you can, if you copy our, our system here, the VIP system that we give you, which is all about setting and negotiating, collecting your fee, okay, you will have more buyers. A lot of agents, Craig, think that you get less, but it's the opposite because of what I just described. Yeah, well, um, industries and, and markets eventually adjust. And you've heard me say this before, Todd, that this is the way it always should have been. Just like uh, when you list a home, you've got an opportunity to negotiate your fee. Well, it should work exactly the same when you represent a buyer. You should have an opportunity to represent, represent or negotiate your fee, rather, with uh, the buyer you're representing. So this, this is called normal. This is the way it always should have worked, that the seller pays their agent, and the buyer pays their agent, and everybody has an opportunity to negotiate their fee. You, you certainly don't want a situation where you've got someone else negotiating your fee if they're not doing a good job. And you know, when we ask this question, well, do you believe that most realtors in your marketplace are good negotiators or poor negotiators? Well, the answer is, well, the, most of the realtors I, uh, in my market are poor negotiators. Well, then that's who's negotiating your fee. If you don't negotiate the fee and um, you, I was going to say delegate it, but you're not delegating it, okay? You're um, abdicating responsibility uh, to somebody else. And we can see the outcome. So um, everyone here should be excited about, well, I, I need to learn how to do this. I need to learn how to compel the buyers, first of all, to meet with me. Second of all, how to compel the buyers to sign a, a buyer agency agreement for a long enough period of time and uh, at the right fee. Before I do anything, before I run around showing houses or doing anything, this must be the rules of engagement. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. <clears throat> I was talking to some uh, uh, Platinum members earlier today on the telephone and we were having a very similar discussion to what we're saying right now. And I, I had to remind them that, look, when you put your homes in the MLS, you're listing homes in the MLS so buyers can have access to them. And not so agents can have access to them. Buyers find houses, call the agent and say, I wanna go see this one. That's the way the majority of homes are sold. So um, when you look at it that way, I can see well, why. I, I, know, I know, Todd, the, the last home that I bought was the, the house in Florida. And I know my wife found it online here in Toronto before we, you know, go to the airport, before we jump on the plane. She already had a house she was interested in. Now, the crazy part is, is we had to fight the realtor to get them to show us that house. And we ended up buying it. The realtor, like, got in the way 
of the house that we wanted to buy. We, they absolutely wanted to show us everything except for the one we wanted to look at, which ironically was, um, you know, the one that we ended up buying. So um, I, I can relate to the frustration that buyers have and uh, the feeling that that the buyers have as to, hey, I can do this myself. I really don't want, uh, I know what I'm looking for more than anybody else. That's their attitude. And uh, I don't want to be pressured to do something I don't want to do. And I don't want someone else controlling what I get to look at and what I don't get to look at. So, you know, from a, a buyer's point of view, I, I kind of understand that. Yep. Amen, brother. All right. Well, let's, um, let's take a look back here. I want to finish this up on this tracking uh, and reporting. And, and what got me started on that is when we started the webinar today, Craig got a picture of the, uh, of the coaching side up and I was reminding everyone that around the fifth of the month, they're going to, you know, you get a, uh, we take a poll and that is, you know, tell us how your business is doing. Is your business up or down over the same time last year and why? So, um, it got us on a number of discussion here about, you know, what should we be tracking? How should we you know, be looking at our numbers? So, um, a couple of things that were really big, uh, for us, you know, that I learned from you early on, um, was just the time that it would take to do things. Once we started signing buyer agreements, um, I had some of the agents on my team that become professional uh, listers of buyers. So they would amass all these buyer agreements, but they wouldn't sell any houses. You know, some guys had 25 or 30 buyers and they would sell one or two houses a month. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? So, you know, that led to some tracking of, of, of in-market buyers. So how long is it taking from the time that we get the buyer agreement signed till the time the buyer gets to closing? And that become a, that become a, a reporting issue. And we would basically share with the agents. Okay. Um, uh, Tom over here, you know, he had an average days in market, the time the buyer signed the agreement to closing of, of, you know, 21 days. Here's one, you know, that had four months. Here's another guy, six months. And, um, and we would reward the agents, you know, for speed to sell, especially working with buyers. So it changed the paradigm of, hey, yeah, we, we got to pick up the phone and call the buyer and, and go find some houses and show up uh, by trying to get that way. So um, everybody pretty much plays differently uh, when you keep score of these things. So uh, just to kind of wrap that up, and that's what that scoreboard looked like. So, yeah, reach over, hand the buyer, agent, outside salesperson, a report every month. Publish it for everybody to see, uh, and reward those that are doing a really good job. Work with those that are struggling a little bit to try to improve, and uh, you can only do that by knowing your numbers. So we've got a session dedicated to this in Anaheim. We'll get into details, look at some examples. Would be really good. So everybody's got some uh, great stuff to look forward to. Um, I know you said that, Craig. I remember our first platinum meeting in Toronto. Uh, you actually brought that up. You know, hey, you know, successful people know their numbers. I remember it from 11 years ago. Yeah, well, it is. It is uh, rings true for all of our very top members. Um, when you sit down and you're meeting with them, they they come prepared for that uh, mm -hmm. day with Todd Walters, and they know their numbers. And uh, if you ever point out an area where they they don't know their numbers, it doesn't take them long to to figure it out and and get those numbers. So. Makes sense, right? The uh, the best agents know the numbers. Yep. It's it's just the way it is. All right. So uh, everybody's chewing on that one. Okay. So and speaking of uh, of Anaheim, our Platinum Millionaire Agent Maker Conference uh, is if Andrea is around, back on. Andrea, did you make it back? I am back. Yeah. Is Susan uh, available? Can you yes. find her? And I have the microphone? line. Susan, your telephone line is open. Hey guys. Hey. So, How are you? Good. Doing really good. So, um, all right. You had a special announcement to make about at the end of day one uh, in Anaheim. Yes. Uh, we've got something big going on. So, why don't you just tell everybody what's happening here and what we need to do? Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. Okay, so on the first night. The night of the first day of the conference, um, we are going to be having a huge, huge after party. So to get your tickets, you need to go to exclusiveplatinumevent.com. The tickets would usually seriously be around about $55 per person, but 
We have Commission Inc. that is sponsoring the party, and we have a huge discounted rate at only 12 bucks. So it's going to be fun. It starts at 6.45. We're going to have desserts and, and cash bar. Uh, you do get a free drink, um, prizes and giveaways. The grand prize, of course, is Craig Proctor. You do get a 30-minute um, business consultation with him. So I hope I win that one. Um, but it is going to be so much fun. So make sure you come for networking. It's got to sign up, exclusiveplatinumevent.com. And, and I hope everybody can make it. Exclusive platinum event with an S or no? Exclusive platinum event dot com. No S. Okay. All right. So uh, here it is. Yeah. Make sure you get your tickets. Don't you like Don't it when you, you when the video freezes you in mid sentence? It sure does. Exclusive it's so attractive. Platinum. <laughs> but it is what it is. So as long as you hear the message, it's just going to be a really fun night, a great time to pick other people's brains, network, ask any questions. You know, it, it's just a really great time for business as well as a lot of fun, making friends, all that good stuff. So, Craig, so what do you time. what do you do on a free thirty minute coaching call with Craig Proctor? Craig, what do I, what, how does that work? Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank Susan, who always does a great job. In, uh, in organize these parties. Uh, Susan, you must, uh, over the years, you must have had the best parties at your house. I, I must say you do a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, yes, and so, uh, you know, if you've ever been to one of these, most of you guys have been to uh, one of the platinum parties that Susan's organized. You know, she does a great job and uh, they keep getting bigger and better. So, uh, the, the winner of this contest is going to get a consultation with me and I am uh, basically going to rip apart your business, uh, but in a nice way. Uh, I'll um, ask you a bunch of questions, and uh, we'll start the conversation off by talking about you know where it is you you want to go, and then we'll look at where you are right now, and we'll figure out uh, what things you're doing that are sort of going to take you in the right direction, and maybe other things that you're doing that perhaps are taking you in the wrong direction. So uh, we'll try to uh, accomplish a lot in that half an hour that we have together on the phone. Sounds good, buddy. Be awesome. Yeah. I've had a lot of those with you and I've been through benefited through every one. So uh, great. Well Susan, thanks a lot. So exclusive platinum event dot com. So we'll yeah. blast out a few emails, put this on the uh, private Facebook page and yeah. uh, get everybody going. Twelve dollars is is uh, pretty inexpensive here. So That's I guess we've deal. got sponsors picking up the Oh yeah. Commission Inc. Okay. I there's love it. I use it. Did you say there's some entertainment going on? Oh, yes. It's a secret, though. Don't tell anybody. So we do have a secret performer coming in. He is fabulous. He has been all over the place, um, tons of engagements all over the world, worked with celebrities like Sylvester Stallone, Jay Leno, uh, Conan O'Brien, you know, just a ton of people that he's worked with. Um, he is quite the celebrity. Uh, we're bringing him in, but it is a surprise, so you'll just have to show up. I, I have a gift for all of my Platinum family members, and you cannot open it until Christmas, so to speak. So you have to show up to see what it is. Okay. Better sign up. Sign up okay. soon. Tickets are going fast. Thanks, Susan. Great job. You're welcome. We'll see you there, guys. Okay. Yeah, we'll see you soon, Susan. All right, awesome. So, uh, so Craig, another thing that I had on the agenda here, I wanted to, um, I thought would be uh, really good for us to cover for just a few minutes, uh, is this right here. Uh, let me throw it up on my screen. We've, we've been running a contest, as you know, and the, the way this contest come about was the importance of association. Uh, many of our program members, I, I don't think really grasp the importance of getting plugged in and hanging out with very successful people. I'm not talking about people that are just doing the same as you or, or close to it, but very successful people. I don't know where else you can go in the real estate industry and be around hundreds of people that make high six-figure incomes with many of them making over a million dollars or more selling real estate. It doesn't exist um, in the industry except here. Uh, in big numbers, and I'm talking an awful lot of big numbers. So the power of association is very critical, and I know that a lot of uh, our members are are excited about coming, but you don't want to just show up. Like you want to make good use of your time there, 
with your fellow Platinum members. So we decided to run a contest, Craig, on, uh, you know, on, okay, so who's done a good job of this now uh, or over the past? And let's hear your story. And, uh, and that contest is, um, is, uh, is ongoing. So I thought that I would uh, share a few of these. Now, you've had some experiences with this one, this contest entry, Craig, and that is that some of our Platinum members around the Toronto area enjoyed the, um, the masterminding so much, they started their own chapter. Yeah, well, I think that's a great idea. I would like to see more of that. But yes, um, we've got about, uh, I'd say, a dozen to a dozen and a half um, uh, Platinum members in the greater Toronto area that meet every month. There might, might have been about 20 of them at the last meeting I was at. Uh, they had one at the Keller Williams office here in Newmarket, and uh, I showed up because it was right here, and uh, it was great. Uh, and they do this on a monthly basis. Um, it's um, it's you know conducted at someone else's office every single month. Uh, but I, I like to refer to that as the Toronto chapter, um, and I would I would like to see you know an Atlanta chapter. I'd like to see um, you know a Los Angeles chapter. I'd like to see um, you know these mastermind meetings happening uh, throughout the, uh, Canada and the U.S. And uh, they they basically are sharing what we teach them and and working together. And it is a great example of a very positive association. And uh, you know we encourage all of you to do that. Yeah. So if um, if you're interested in putting something like that together in your marketplace, mastermind with your fellow platinum members, here's what you do: send me an email. Okay, here's the email address, uh, platinum at toddwalters.com. It's platinum at toddwalters.com. And put in the subject line, chapter. Okay? And just let me know that you're interested in running one of these. That's what we're looking for right now. We know there's people that will attend, but what we're looking for are leaders. Like, who's interested in hosting and, uh, and helping get this off the ground in your marketplace if it doesn't exist now? So let's start there. Okay, let's... um. Let's look at another uh, another entry. We don't have time to go through them all, but I want to go through four or five of these, Craig, because it uh, sparks great conversation. Uh, this one's from Ken, and uh, Ken says, "Look, I, I made money with the program. Like, you know, I know there's an entry fee to be associated with it, but uh, I'm getting money back. Like, I'm, I'm making money from referrals. Uh, you know, Jay Macklin even paid Ken a fee. Um, and another benefit is that Ken actually uh, picked up the phone, called fellow Platinum member Jim Betrell, and went right to his office, spent time with him, checked his office out. And, uh, and that's a good thing because Jim's a pretty good copier and implementer of what we did. So, You know, uh, Andrea, Andrea sent me uh, Sam's ad uh, that was on the ad clinic on Friday. And do you remember... Uh, I think you were on it, right? It was you and I, and we were looking at Sam's ad, and I said, "Who's Jim?" <laughs> and you said, "You said, well, that's Jim Petrell." So, uh, you know, we're always telling you guys to copy. Well, um, Sam took that to the next level because he didn't even re remove Jim Petrell's uh, Jim Petrell's uh, name from the ad. So we we caught onto that on the Friday ad clinic. But uh, uh, thank you for sending that to me, Andrea. You're welcome. And uh, who's got who's got control of this webinar right now, Andrea or Todd? Me. Okay. Uh, if Andrea had it, I would have her. I would have her flip that on there to show everybody. But uh, yeah, I thought that. I mean, um, Sam is so focused on copying, he uh, forgot to take Jim's Jim's name off, which uh, I think you said happened to you a couple times, Todd. Oh yeah. Uh, it wasn't. It was more than a couple times. There were ads that would show up in my marketplace of of you know have your picture on it, my name, have um, my picture on it, your name. And uh, that, that happened more than once. Yeah, it was a rush. You know, it was, it was a, it's a race, man. It's a race to copy and implement the system. And, uh, you know, so in that race, and, and look, the funny thing is I still get leads. Like, you st still get leads, even though it's my ad with the houses and stuff and my name and number and your picture, I still got, like, people still call. <laughs> so, uh uh, yeah, some some great stories there. I could show you. I wish I had some of those. I could uh, I could show people uh, for real because they're 
<laughs> You're priceless. Priceless. All right, so um, let's take a look uh, at a couple of more of these, and then we'll uh, uh, we'll move on. Uh, but here's one right here from a pal, Vic. Okay, and Vic just lists them out. Hey, here's five. Okay, you know Warren Flax uh, tips help me win against the real estate department complaint. So uh, you know it's not unusual for our fellow competitors to complain about our business practices because they see it as unfair. And and I admit, me telling sellers in the marketplace I will sell your home guaranteed or I'll buy it gives me an unfair advantage over my competitors who are unwilling to do such things. I admit it. So it's you know some of the competitors they get they get upset you know by that you know rather than working on growing their own businesses they will file complaints so um, you know and when people file a complaint with the real estate departments the real estate department's job is to look into the complaint they gotta they gotta do their job so we have to answer it so you see Vic here a real estate complaint and uh, Warren helped him with that and because. Others who have ran into similar situations, being able to bounce that off of them, provide the right information uh, to you know answer those questions and, and deal with it. Boy, that's that's a big deal having that kind of network. Um, Vinny helped me make money using Zillow, and uh, actually Vinny uh, and uh, and Rudy have a special session coming up in Anaheim, Craig, uh, where Rudy's going to be showing everyone. Um, how he's handling his tour of homes and generating a lot of leads when people show up there. Uh, people exchanging all of their information and what it is that they want in return from what Rudy has at each property that they get to. So uh, uh, everybody's going to get a big benefit for that session as well. And uh, since I saw Vinny's name there, Rudy's better half. And, uh, and a couple of others there. That, uh, that Vic threw in. So uh, those are things, these are good contest entries, by the way. There's more than we can get to, but man, I love, uh, I love reading these stories uh, that everybody's been sending over. So um, here's one. Uh, we, we mentioned this before, Craig, that it's, it's, not, um, it's not if you're going to launch the guaranteed sell program, it's just when. You know, so if you're in the program long enough here, uh, it's a matter of time before you're, you're marketing your home sold guaranteed or I'll buy it. Um, but being around other people that do it on a regular and consistent basis and, and shrug their shoulders, I think it's no big deal, but it's a game changer in your business. It's probably the less riskiest, the least, is that, is that a word, least risky performance guarantee you can make. Um, well, that's, that's a perfect example of of associations and the, the positive effect of, a, of positive associations because I think all of you would agree that when you first got into the coaching program you were um, trying to get your head around the guaranteed sale program and very few brand new coaching members implement the guaranteed sale program right away it usually takes months sometimes years for that to happen and the way that it eventually happens is as you, you know, come to the conferences and you get to know other coaching members and platinum members, eventually you meet so many other members that are successfully implementing and using the guaranteed sale program that you start to think, well, all these people can't be wrong. Uh, whatever my issues are, you know, I, I've got to overcome those because I need to implement the guaranteed sale program as well. So that probably wouldn't happen if all of you lived in isolation. So let's say there were no super conferences, no platinum meetings, you didn't get to intermingle with your other members, you were left on your own in isolation, uh, you'd still probably think the same way. You'd have all these reasons why you wouldn't be able to implement the guaranteed sale program. You'd have all these, uh, all these fears. So um, that's just a, a very good example, uh, Todd, as as to why uh, you know coming out to the meetings and and getting to to know what the top agents are doing is is very important. It would it begs the question really, 
uh, as to what else are you not doing that the most successful members are doing that you ought to be doing and what's holding you back you know like that's the idea here is you, you come up to these meetings and you may not even be aware of uh, things that you should be doing and they exist and they're by dozens or hundreds of, of members and when you see it all over the place you've got to go back home thinking well why not me why, why am I not doing this Amen, brother. Holy crap. I don't think it, it, look, a four million dollar real estate business franchise, which is what we bought here from you, um, it, it doesn't happen overnight. There's there are T's to be crossed and I's to be dotted, details. Um, Jim Betrell has a session here, Craig. Uh, he realized that uh, when I was working with him at one of the TW for a days, that from the time the inside sales agent books the appointment while they're still on the phone. Okay, just set the appointment. Prospect says yes on the phone from that moment until the outside salesperson shows up at the door. There are five. There are five steps. Five. Okay, and uh, so now that I mentioned that, people are trying to. They're, they're thinking in their heads, trying to name them off. Well, well, what, what are the steps? What am I doing? And how does that compare to? You know this franchise prototype that I bought from Craig, and uh, so that those are the things that you miss, you know, without full engagement into the program. So Jim's doing that session there. Now that you mentioned that, that's, that's a good reason to be there. Um, I, I like I like the one that I, I threw up on the screen here. Uh, that not only are you getting referral business uh, from your fellow platinum members if you're doing this, but your referral checks are bigger because the majority of platinum members once you've been in the program a little bit, understand pricing and price elasticity and collecting fees and fee deficiencies. So the referral checks are just freaking bigger. It doesn't take long to uh, to amass um, quite a bit of money uh, just from your fellow platinum members. But anyway, uh, those are a few that I uh, wanted to show. I've got um, over 40 of these, Craig, by the way, that uh, will take some time to, to go through. But there's some really good ones, man, really good ones here. So, anyway, I uh, wanted to get that in. So, yeah, I'd like um, to have 4,000 of those. Yeah, it'd be great, but we had about 40. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so if we have any, anybody else out there that would like to uh, submit this, uh, I mean, it, it's, um, that's, that's what we like to see. We like to see uh, these success stories, and, uh, you know, we, we, that's what this is all about. That's why Todd and I get up every morning. We want, uh, we, we want this to happen for everybody. Yeah, especially on this uh, on the referral and networking side. Marty Bennett has a special session too in Anaheim, Craig, where she's been able to pull off uh, selling, you know, her, her condominium buildings in conjunction with other platinum members, and uh, and paying out big, big, big referral fees, uh, and doing joint ventures and other things. She's gonna she's gonna share a session about that and how she was able to do that. It'll give everybody a lot of ideas. And how you can think a little bigger about your present business and where your customers come from, and how you do business and make money uh, instead of just singularly selling homes, you know, on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. So it'll be a, it'll be a real treat. So we've made a really good case, I think, haven't we, to be in Anaheim at the Platinum Millionaire Agent Maker Conference, along with giving some uh, pretty good pretty good gold nuggets here along the way. So. Uh, Excited yeah, we're probably about. we're probably preaching to the choir because uh, most of you that uh, attend the webinars are the same people that show up to the meetings. But um, anyway, we always uh, we always uh, give it our best to convince everybody to be there because um, you know we know our numbers too, and mm -hmm. our numbers our numbers prove without a shadow of a doubt uh, those of you that show up to the meetings get the most out of the program, the biggest results. Yep. Okay, so the big thing that we wanted to uh, focus in on here today was just that fact, the association. Like, I wanted to make sure everybody got it. We've spent about an hour on it. Um, the power of who you hang out with, uh, and it matters, man. It's not, I remember, Craig, at my REMAX office, um, going into the REMAX office, and there was literally people there that I liked and I knew, but I couldn't talk to them about my business. You know, they're running in and out, you know, they're 
part-time real estate agents, dabblers in the business, solo practitioners that were running wide open, uh, but bumping up against the confines of time, running through divorces and bankruptcy because you know of improper management of life and business balance. Um, I, I just I couldn't talk to these guys. Plus, they were competitors. So, um, you, you know, you offering the opportunity to be with and around a lot of other very successful people, millionaire, multi-millionaire real estate agents. It, it's a game changer. Uh, and sometimes you make new friends along the way. So we've done a good job of, of talking about that. All right. I got a few questions here, Craig, that were emailed over to me. And I want to run through them because it, uh, it'll lead into some discussion and some help uh, for some members uh, for a couple of minutes. So I got this email from uh, Keller. And, uh, and Keller is running into a situation like a lot of our, our members do. And, uh, and this is one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my real estate uh, career uh, was when I went out and I, I over rented our rented space in anticipation of growth. And, uh, and then realized that I made a big mistake later down the road when I'm overpaying for space and not able to leverage it. Okay, so I made my most amount of money when I had a 900 square foot space. And, uh, you know, it's full of administrative people. The outside sales guys are coming and going. And uh, we had our highest net profit of any particular year. I remember it really well. So I'm sensitive to that subject here. You know, from uh, this question from Keller is, hey, I, I want to get another outside sales agent, but I have no more offices. Should I move out and rent a room from a neighbor a couple of doors down and let my best OSA have my office or have the new OSA work from home? So, uh, Craig, how did you combat this issue with uh, your outside sales agents, you know, in your in your team, because um, you're at a Remax office, I'm sure there's other Remax agents there that are eating up a lot of office space. Had to work for you. Uh, you mean is is how I was able to get this space for the other agents? Yeah, how'd you work it out? Like you 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 it was your agents a, worked out of the office, or did they work from home? What yeah, it was a, it was a two story building, uh, the Remax office, and uh, the deal that I hatched with my broker uh, was that I would get the entire uh, second floor uh, or I was going to move out and have a satellite office. So uh, there was, I think, an insurance broker on the second floor uh, that had uh, recently given notice that the insurance broker was moving out, so I moved up. And the deal I had with, my, with the Remax broker was that I wasn't going to pay for any of the space, which was a pretty sweet deal because uh, I don't know how many square feet we had. We probably had, I don't know, 3,500, 4,000 square feet, and I didn't pay anything for it. Now, what was in it for the broker uh, to do that is I'm in a I was in a 95.5 region, so uh, if we did, you know, four million dollars, she was going to get five percent of that. Uh, also, my um, every agent I recruited was going to pay a desk fee to her. And you see, when I was thinking about the satellite office, I was adding up, well, what are going to be the costs of me having to lease that building and pay for heat and hydro, all the utilities? Um, it, you know, it was, going to, it was probably going to cost me more. And um, since I wasn't going to leave Remax because the ranking I had within Remax was important for my seminar and coaching side of the business, uh, that's the deal that I, that I did with her. So I had lots of space, which was, was great. Now, if my broker wasn't flexible, uh, then I would have, and I wanted to stay with that same brokerage, I would have, I would have got a satellite office. And um, if staying with Remax wasn't important, I probably just would have went out and you know, bought my own building and have my own company. Mm -hmm. So how important is it to have your outside sales agents working from you know, a centralized office on a consistent basis? Well, I, I liked it uh, for all the business I did in Newmarket and Aurora. Uh, all those agents had an office, their own private office. Uh, that wasn't a bullpen situation. Everybody had their, you know, the offices weren't big. They were maybe, uh, I don't know, nine by nine. They weren't very big. Uh, but as I started to expand outside of Newmarket and Aurora, some of those agents uh, did work from their home. 
So as I started to expand into Richmond Hill and Thornhill and Markham, some of those agents would work out of their house and then they would just show up at the Remax office on Monday mornings for the weekly meeting. Okay, well, there you go, Keller. Uh, maybe that'll answer your question. Craig, I know that you spent most of your time working from home out of the office as the rainmaker uh, versus going in every day. I was talking to Jim Betrayal not too long ago and he says, yeah, I'm in the office and they knock on my door and they say, you got a minute. And it's never a minute. So yeah, no, that's, uh, that's one thing I'd re highly, highly, highly recommend to all of you. It was one of the best business moves I ever made. I get so much more done in a day um, as far as focused work. You see, most of us, uh, if we were completely honest with ourselves, we realize that we don't get very much work done at the office. I mean, you can, you can kid yourself or you can be honest with yourself. But if you're real honest with, with yourself, I bet you, you you recognize this fact that when you go to the office, you're distracted uh, quite a bit. And so uh, I, I couldn't get that to stop from happening. You know, people knocking on my door, people just walking, barging into the office. Uh, so uh, I just packed up my stuff and moved home one day. And I really forced my team, it forced my team to uh, figure it out and, and make these decisions uh, and, and make it work without me. Um, I basically had to teach them to think like Craig. Hey, that reminds me, um, speaking of offices and office space and brokerages, um, on day three of the Platinum Conference, that's on Saturday, we've got a special presentation that we're doing with Jay Macklin. Uh, we've had uh, quite a few number of Platinum members that actually own real estate offices that uh, um, have been asking for help in growing their real estate brokerages. So you and I and Jay Macklin have been working on this now for close to a year uh, and, uh, and we are uh, going to share that with everyone uh, at the Platinum Conference on day three, that's Saturday, uh, I think that's the uh, 19th. Uh, we're going to share with everyone the uh, Craig Proctor's Millionaire Real Estate Brokerage Program and there will be a few of you we know that will be very interested in something like that. So uh, that gives everybody another reason to be there. I think Jay has gone from uh, no REMAX offices to four now. And uh, in a very short period of time, everybody knows my story, gone from zero real estate commission and no real estate company uh, three years ago to uh, not even our third full calendar year here. And, you know, doing uh, close to 80 transactions a month, over $5 million, $6 million in GCI here. So we know how to do this better than anybody else. So uh, those of you who have a real estate company or brokerage and you want to grow that, then uh, Jay Macklin and I are looking forward to uh, discussing and sharing that. So pretty exciting. That's a big announcement there, Craig. All right. So let's, uh, let's take a look at two more things here. Here's another email I got from uh, Rick Brash. Uh, Craig, and it's a recruiting website. I'm going to pull it up. Okay, so this is uh, Rick says, "Hey, I want you to take out my check out my OSA recruiting page uh, and and help me out here." So um, I looked at it, and uh, you can see I can scroll down, and uh, some of this will stream through. And I want to talk about uh, recruiting, especially recruiting outside sales agents, uh, real fast, uh, because this is a big deal. Everybody that's uh, on the webinar now, Craig, at some point, if you're not already, need really bad in a big way, really good outside sales agents. They handle the overflow of business that's going on. So I'm looking at Rick's, uh, uh, you know, Rick's recruiting page here, and it's pretty good if the uh, agents are already pre-sold on or know who or believe in or have good experiences with Rick. So. Uh, but for the majority, it's what it's what uh, you and I, Craig, would call a bridge too far. Uh, you know, it's, you, we can't tell the public out there, hey, um, call me to list your home. Oh, and it's uh, seven percent. You know, when you call, like we would get very few calls from ad like that because they don't know the benefits in uh, calling us and listing with us. So it's the same thing with recruiting agents here. Is that um, 
if you know the benefits in working with Rick, uh, you know, then you would probably uh, see this see this landing page after being directed to it by an ad, and uh, it would be a, a good response. It's got lots of good content and lots of benefits on it, but it's unlikely that we can uh, get folks to take us up on the offer to apply to work with us before we really have a chance to meet with them and really show them the benefits, the leads, and how everything works. So um, the marketing in our recruiting system here uh, that we, we've got for you in the Platinum program is more or less about getting prospects, agents, to raise their hand and identify themselves as people who are interested in just doing things differently and making more money. They're working, they're tired of working all the time to do it. They want to focus on only one part of the sales process, just working with buyers and sellers. So our ads kind of target those people and then we direct them to um, a special place where we invite them to come and check it out and come and see what it is we have to offer and we get them all in the room at the same time and that's where we make our pitch of benefits, how things work, how you know how we do things and then they get to decide at that point whether they want to work or not um, and then apply. Okay, so versus applying before those things happen. So um, it's what I call a bridge too far, I guess would be to summarize a, a landing page like that. And I see a lot of agents, Craig, who have somehow done this. Now, if I'm Craig Proctor in Newmarket, you're not a stranger to the real estate agents in Newmarket, Craig. Um, you've been doing it for 20 years. You've made millions of dollars uh, selling real estate, billions of dollars in sales volume. Uh, these agents know who you are. So when you say, hey, I'm Craig Proctor, and I've got room for a couple of agents on my team, it's easier to get people to follow through there uh, than it is for, say, an agent that ha doesn't have that track record exposure or what we call that positioning in the marketplace. So you would have to lower the threshold of resistance in marketing uh, to get more people interested in the benefits first. Um, it's like Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump says, hey, I need people to come work for me. He has them line up out the door. Uh, and uh, he, he can't handle the application. So, um, same thing, positioning has a lot to do with how you market when it comes to recruiting as well. So these are the things we can help you with and your, co your coach can help you with. Um, and to be fair to Rick, this is from his archives back in the old days when he was with KW and he wanted to show it to me and say, hey, look at you know, kind of some of the things we were doing then versus uh, how easier it is right now to get agents by focusing on benefits first then applying for the job. So anyway, I wanted to share that with everyone as well. So we do have a special session in Anaheim that deals directly with this, as well as the recruiting page, the landing page, and the new um, recruiting video that we've put together as a result of good success with the converters, Craig. Uh, we've got um, great storytelling in video for the recruiting landing pages, including the lead flow chart, and those kinds of things that tell the agents how we're different, how they can come and check it out, see for themselves, and do group interviews that way. So now when you would do your recruiting, Craig, you did them all, I think, based on what group interviews. You would put four, five, six, ten agents in a room and uh, and go from there, right? So, so give us a really good idea then of how the process started, how it ended. Uh, well, you know, it's it's the same principle that we teach you when it comes to lead generation. You know, you've heard Todd and I say that we want all of you to have more buyers and sellers than you could possibly handle. And the reason that is, is because we all acknowledge the fact that some buyers are much better than other buyers and some sellers are much better than other sellers. And wouldn't it be great if we could exercise our power of choice and only spend time with the very best buyers and sellers. Well, it's exactly the same lead generation process for new recruits. Uh, we know that most agents we probably don't want, but there's a few good ones out there that we do. So my recruiting system is designed for that. It's designed for the inevitable that um, I'm probably gonna have 10 or 15 people come to the meeting and there might be one or two that I'm interested in. But to get to the one or two, I've got to have 10 to 15. So I'm not really interested in sitting down, um, you know, if there's 15 of them, uh, you know, weeding out uh, the 13 to get to the two. So I do a group interview. And also, 
you can imagine if you were somebody that was interested in coming to work with me and you're one of 10 or 15 responded sitting in my boardroom um, you know the fact that there's a lot of people vying for maybe one or two positions it's it's good it creates a bit of competition um, I always felt Todd if um, you know if I sat down with an agent that I really wanted how many of you you are guilty of this we kind of sugarcoat the job we make it sound maybe a little better than it is because we really want to convince someone to come and work with us well you don't need to do that when you've got 15 realtors all vying for one position so you can be very you know I call it brutally honest with um, you know what the positions all about what's in it for them um, so that's the way I like to do it and and then uh, on the way out they hand me um, a little form that says yes I'm interested and in I want to be considered uh, and go to the next step of a private interview where no I'm just you know, not interested in this, which is okay. See, I, I'm not interested in, nor should you be interested in trying to talk people into doing something they're not, they don't want to do. So th that's how I did it, uh, and I did it on a regular basis. Um, and Todd, you uh, you coined uh, uh, a ABR, always be recruiting, uh, because I was always recruiting, you were always recruiting, um, and, and uh, Todd, we would often talk about sports teams. Uh, if you remember, I'd always talk about the Atlanta Braves are always recruiting and and by the way uh, by the look at their statistics this year they, they better keep doing that uh, they better keep recruiting Todd they're not doing very good now if you take a look at the top of the American League East uh, you will see the Toronto Blue Jays Yeah, I had my microphone muted there when I was laughing. The uh, the, uh, the Atlanta Braves did a bad job of recruiting, like you said, unlike the Toronto Blue Jays, obviously got it right uh, this year. Uh, but they don't stop. They don't stop. Like, um, I was talking to a Platinum member uh, before the webinar, Craig. We were working on his business, and he was complaining about, you know, some of the people that they brought on the team. That, you know, they kind of started out good and, and uh, then kind of fizzled out. Things weren't working really well thought others would be really good, brought them on, didn't work out so well. And I'm like, look, man, it's just like, um, you know, a, a professional baseball team. They will pay millions of dollars to get someone uh, who was doing really well. They come over to the new team, and they don't do well. But what do they do? They trade them off. They get rid of them. They make a change. And uh, and life keeps going, and the, the sports teams keep thriving, and they it, it's the same thing here. So a lot of our members... You, you know, we, we can learn a lot from sports if we, if we really think about this. Okay, so, you know, in, in, some, in, in some sports, there's a salary cap. And in other sports, there's not a salary cap. Okay, so if you take a look at hockey, hockey has a salary cap. And uh, prior to the salary cap, the Toronto Maple Leafs, we could just go buy big market here, right, just like the New York Rangers, we could just go buy the best talent. But that doesn't work anymore because the salary cap. So the most successful teams, here's what they've had to learn to do. They've learned how to recruit talent, uh, recruit people, talented people, before they were good. Okay? So, uh, and that's really um, why the Toronto Blue Jays have been so successful. I mean, they grow these people from within. So... That's what I was always looking for, Todd, um, when I was recruiting people for, for my team as skilled people, uh, where I saw something in them. And you see, some of you, you're thinking, well, I want to recruit people that are already successful. You're not going to get the people that are already successful. They're very difficult to recruit, and they don't need you. I would rather have people that need me, right, and people that I can groom and I can, uh, I can teach them how to be great. So, you know, this system uh, really shows ordinary people how to get extraordinary results. So that's what I'm looking for. When I'm recruiting, I want the right personality type, but I'm looking for, I was looking for the next Lindy Black. You know, Lindy Black was hungry. She was skilled. She was new, though. Was she successful? No, but I could see she was going to be successful. And those are the kind of people that I was looking for. I want to grow these people from within and the best um, you know the best sports franchises that's what they're really good at um, you know you can't uh, with a salary cap anyway you just can't be out there buying the best 
uh, people. And like you said, sometimes you buy somebody really great. You trade away the a lot to get somebody that was really great in another team. You bring them over, and they're not great. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the idea here is we've got to be really, really good at um, detecting uh, talent. For example, in 2004, our first platinum meeting, I said, uh, you know what, I'm going to pick somebody to lead this group. Out of all these people I could pick from, there was this one guy from Atlanta that really stood out. His name was Todd Walters. I said, uh, that's the guy right there. That ended up being a pretty good uh, a pretty good decision. So we've got to surround ourselves with really good people. I have, and Todd, you have. We all, if we're going to be successful, need to learn how to do this. Yep. So I threw up on the screen there, uh, just so everybody, for everybody's reference. If you're looking for the best ads to run and what the landing page should really look like, just go to the coaching site. You can see it right there. Platinum uh, recruiting uh, you're, systems you're, library. You're, 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 you're breaking and, up. Uh, uh, breaking up. Yeah, there's the manual, and uh, there's all the information there. So, uh, Platinum Recruiting Systems Library is where you can pull down. That's the first place to. Guess where we put all of the uh, best of the best ads uh, for Platinum members that they've been running that are working well. All of Craig's ads are there. Mine, uh, landing pages, information line scripts, everything necessary to recruit really good agents. So uh, the videos aren't there. Uh, we'll show you those in Anaheim. Okay, so you can uh, take a look at those. Uh, we've got a good selection of recruiting videos for everybody to pick from. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's some great stuff. So I think we've done a couple of, of really good things here, Craig. We've done a really good job of, of talking about association, the importance there, and uh, made the case for it, gave good examples. Um, successful people know their numbers. That, that poll is getting ready to come out here in about four days for everyone. So as you answer the poll on the coaching site, is your business up or down over the same time last year, or you know? And if so, why? As you're answering those questions, think back on the scoreboard sheet that I shared with everyone. Look forward to uh, spending a lot of time on that when we get together as a group uh, in Anaheim at the Platinum Millionaire Agent Maker Conference. Okay, and uh, and, and a few other things that we've thrown in today that um, I, I thought were beneficial uh, to discuss and talk about. So, and thanking Sue's as well. Um, some of you guys have some questions, so we should probably bring Andrea on and, uh, and, and try to deal with some of those questions here. We're getting a, a little bit long-winded, a little short on time. So, Andrea, uh, why don't you take it away? I've got a couple of emails here, too. I'm going to pull up for members while you're doing that. Okay, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and type your question in the chat box. We do have a hand raised and some questions. A lot of our members are asking early on, where can they get the scoreboard? Can they download it? Yep, you can get it in Anaheim at the Platinum Millionaire Agent Maker Conference. I'm not giving it out until then. Now, in in, rea in reality, it's on the coaching site. Like um, Craig and I have great job security. Craig, you know we've been talking about the same things now for 11 years. <laughs> so we have yeah, great well, job I, I used to I used to joke around. With, I I used to joke around with my my real estate team members because we would uh, we would take the the same uh, topics, you know, uh, on our Monday meetings. It, it was the same system, right? We would take a different aspect of the system every single Monday. Some of my team members were with me for 20 years, and uh, I used to joke around saying, uh, "Yeah, it's good. It's good job security. Um, no fear of them going out on their own because I've got to continually kind of." be talking about this over and over again it's not that they they don't they don't understand it. it's not that they've never heard it before but they got to keep hearing it uh, they got to keep that in front of them and um, you know that's uh, that's what we try to do here uh, you know we we have to be constantly exposed to this if we if we want to affect change that's um, see here's the truth of the matter is is we're habitual right we're all habitual. Uh, many of us are actually controlled by other people's habits. Okay, there's people around you that have a routine, and if you mess with their routine, it disturbs them. 
But the crazy thing is you too have a routine. And so uh, Todd and I are really just trying to change your routine. So it means, you know, we got to sort of deprogram the routine that you have and program you with a better routine. So that's that's why, you know, we're going to keep talking about this stuff until you, you do it. And you've also heard me say at the conferences before there's a big difference between what we what we know and what we do. We we know a lot. So you could be listening to Todd and I on these webinars and say, well, I know that. I've heard that before. But the question is, is are you doing it? And I love that one. So, uh, yeah, I will give everybody that uh, that scoreboard, but it's broken down into a lot more in-depth um, uh, pages. So we want to run through that in detail in front of everyone and talk about knowing your numbers and tracking and reporting, how you do that using your contact management system. Uh, and uh, sharing that information with your team members, uh, when, where, how, and what. We're going to do that uh, day one. Craig and I are going to walk through all that. So, uh, so yep, everybody will get it then, and it will be posted on the coaching site. So, uh, Andrea? Okay, along those same lines of where it's at, Sam would like to know where he can find the OSA Recruiting Guarantee Conditions Stipulations. Mm, that's a good question. That's a good question. I get asked that question often. So let me repeat that for everyone and uh, throw that back up on the screen. So Craig, um, you know, performance guarantees work really well. So, you know, we would guarantee uh, agents, uh, you know, that if they, if they come uh, and join my real estate sales team, that they would make, you know, say an additional $50,000 more than they did over the previous 12 months, for example. And if they didn't, I would pay them the difference. But obviously there are conditions to that. Uh, the number could be twenty-five thousand, could be fifty thousand, could be a hundred thousand. You know, it's it's um, whatever's appropriate for your marketplace. Um, if you need such a performance guarantee, but the performance guarantee alone is not enough to get people to to uh, to jump ship. But it was used to close some of the really good agents that I wanted uh, that were on the fence. Like, you know, is it really what you say it is, Todd? Is it really going to be as good as you say? Are these leads really as good as you say they are? Uh, and all that kind of stuff. So it was it was used to combat that uh, when you know we ran into difficult recruiting situations. So, um, but the conditions are actually in the um, in the agreement that the agents would sign when they join the team. Sam, um, it's in the independent independent contract agreement, the agent agreement, um, on what they had to do in order for that to take place. The first one, the first condition was simple. They had to show me what their income was for the previous 12 months. And they had to do that within 14 days of showing up. Okay? So, you know, give me your tax returns, whatever your income was uh, for the previous year. And, uh, and, and I'll, I'll tell you that out of the uh, years and years and years of offering that performance guarantee, I had one agent actually follow through and do that. So uh, it satisfied their peace of mind, but once they got in, it was no longer that important to them to follow through and you know and, and give me a hard time or even bring it up about the performance guarantee. Um, so um, now that that was on them, it wasn't me. I, I expected them to follow through and do it, but I realized it wasn't as important at that moment in time after they come on board. Okay, but uh, but they all made over fifty thousand dollars more. Holy moly, uh, Craig, you you had agents, I had agents that would make. Two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars in gross commission income. Oh, Craig, I'm on my way here in a few minutes to have dinner with um, my guys that run run the team down in uh, Peachtree City, Georgia, here at my my real estate company. They were the they, they made over a hundred thousand dollars just last month in in uh, commissions. So uh, Susan's her name. So I'm going to uh, take I'm taking Susan to my favorite restaurant. Her, her family and mine out to dinner tonight to celebrate that achievement. Um, but yet we both had that. We both had guys that would make two to three hundred thousand dollars a year in net income. So anyway, uh, oh, you get that in the uh, actual agreement. So rather than me go find the ID number, Andrea, I will let everybody know where that is. And so that if you want or need a performance guarantee, and I would talk to your coach about this before you carte blanche 
throw out a performance guarantee for income with agents because there, there are conditions that need to be in place. I outlined them all, like you got to be at the sales meetings, you have to maintain a certain performance rate uh, of, of con conversion, and uh, you know you got to show me what you made the previous year. Simple things like that, nothing crazy. Just do the work, basically. So, okay, next uh, next question, Andrew. Okay, we have Kathy Buck who's raised her hand. I'm going to go ahead and open the mic. Kathy, you're muted on your end. If you have a question, just go ahead and unmute the red mic button. Okay, while well, we're waiting for that, um, Clint says, is there a theme for the after party last time, the team jerseys? <laughs> that would be Susan's department, but there is a theme, okay, and, uh, and everybody should have seen that. Let me throw it up on the screen, okay. So here's the theme, okay, if it's not obvious already, uh, prepare to mystify your marketplace the magical millionaire real estate business. Okay, so if you were to read through, even like the, you know, the uh, first session here, psychic selling registration desk. Okay, um, secrets of the psychic millionaire real estate business. Reading your, what is it? Reading your seller prospect's mind for perfect message to market match to get more listings. So the theme is apparent uh, on what's going on. But there's no uh, football or baseball jerseys required. Okay, you could bring your magic wand. And we have no further questions on my end. Okay, All right, great. All right, so we're having a lot of fun, and uh, this this conference here, the Millionaire Agent Maker Conference, you know, is going to be another um, fun fun event. It's going to be our our biggest, um, best, most amazing event we've ever put on. So we're looking forward to it from that perspective and just having a great time with everyone. And uh, since this was the webinar before that event, it's just a couple of weeks away, I uh, wanted to spend a good bit of time talking about it and the association that happens there, what should be happening when you get there, um, sharing and doing business with your fellow members, okay, and all the things that happen as a result of that association. Okay, and threw in a few, few big gold nuggets along the way. So, um, so Craig, I know you've been working really hard here on this big event. And uh, when are you coming in? Uh, I will be there. I think I get there Monday, September 14th. But I have I was working on the conference all day today. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you probably saw the email exchange between uh, Ruth and my office. She was panicking because uh, she was looking for you know materials to get to the uh, to get to the printer to get printed and all that stuff like we've been so busy cramming materials in I showed everybody when we started the webinar today all the file folders and materials that have been put together and uh, it was so much that we couldn't even fit it all in the book you know so we're going to get it on the USB stick for everyone uh, so yeah a lot of work's gone into making this uh, extraordinary and uh, we're looking forward to it. Hey, I want to do this uh, before we shut off today. I want to give a shout out to John. Uh, John Ricky sent me this email. Um, he's already done uh, as much business in 2015 so far that he did in um, all of 2014. So up until August, uh, he's uh, he's already made as much as he did all year last year. So the definition of a quantum leap is a 50% or more increase in business. So you get to the half halfway mark and your business is already where it was the entire year last year congratulations you've made yourself a quantum leap and we want to repeat that year in and year out and the key to doing that is simply copying implementing these systems working with your coach dotting the I's crossing the T's on the details and uh, being involved and engaged in the coaching program it doesn't work without the coaching okay so make sure everybody knows that Okay, uh, the marketing systems, the, the you got to know how it all works. You wouldn't buy a McDonald's franchise and, and say, okay, see you later. It doesn't work without their coaching and training. It's the same thing here. That's what we're here for. So we'll help you get there, and uh, it's going to be a great ride. So anyway, looking forward to seeing everyone there. I want to thank everybody for hey, jumping Todd, on today's Todd, webinar. Yeah, Todd, Todd, I have one more as well. Um, 
I don't know uh, if if you uh, shared this one from uh, Sandy Casella. I won't I won't read it all, but uh, Sandy's here in Toronto, and she uh, sent you and I this email on Friday, August 14th, and she said, "Hi, gentlemen. Pretty excited because I've surpassed my GCI goal that I set for this year already. So already by mid-August, um, Sandy had had reached her GCI goal for the entire year." She said, this is a huge goal for me on a number of fronts. I didn't even think a single agent could hit these numbers. When I set this goal, I had absolutely no idea how I was going to do it. Not only is this my best year ever in real estate business, but my net this year is more than I've ever even grossed. It's more than two and a half times what I grossed in 2014. My goal this year was $250,000 in GCI. Okay, she's already surpassed that by August. My 2016 goal, $1 million. And again, I have no idea how I'm going to do it, but I'm sure with your help, I'm going to get there. But first of all, I want to finish this year really strong, so I need to stay focused. Once again, thank you so much for everything, Sandy. So great job, uh, Sandy Casella here in Toronto. Yep, I threw it up on the screen there. So uh, we like these stories. So any of your stories like that, please share them with Craig and I. It keeps us going, keeps us motivated to work on these things and show up and do a good job for you guys. So, all right. Uh, okay, that's all I've got today, Craig. Okay, well, great job. Look forward to seeing everybody uh, not that long. Today is September the 1st, so I'm going to see everybody, I guess, in about 12 or 13 days. Yeah, man. Yeah, so uh, have a good evening, and uh, we'll talk. Yeah, I, I arrive on the 14th, so I, I guess I, I'd be a little longer if I went out 17th. So I'm going to see everybody uh, in a couple weeks, we'll say. But I, I am there. Uh, what day do you arrive, Todd? The uh, 16th. Okay, so I'm there a couple days uh, before you. All right, folks. Well, look, uh, thanks, uh, as always, for your support. Um, we will see, hopefully, all of you in Anaheim. Uh, Todd, great job today, as always. And Andrea, great job. Thank you, uh, as always, for doing a wonderful job for us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful afternoon. This officially ends the webinar for today.